Hello, my name is Claudia Urbano of Can TV. I'm also the founder of Chicago Urbanite, the blog that promotes the city of Chicago as a global cultural destination through world music and dance. Today, I have the pleasure to interview Mr. Jeff DeLong. He's the marketing director of the Athenaeum Theater here in Chicago. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Claudia. So uh, let me uh, let me know if I'm spelling out uh, the name right. You were giving it's us the, a, a, a little- It's the Athenaeum awesome. Theater. It's probably the most misspelled theater in the entire city of Chicago. Um, and people have had 100 years to try and get right, but no one seems to get right. So that's why we let mm -hmm. know how to pronounce it, Athenaeum Theater. And actually, the slogan for, for the theater is difficult to spell, easy to love. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, I have trouble with it. Almost everyone that comes through our door has trouble with it. Um, so rather than make it a liability, we might made it an asset. And this way, you'll never forget the Athenaeum Theater. That's a great idea. So tell us all about Athenaeum Theater. Why is it so easy to love it? Well, you know, uh, we are the oldest continuously operating off-loop theater in the city of Chicago. Mm -hmm. We've been up on the northwest side at Wellington, Lincoln, and Southport. Uh, the building itself was built as the social center for St. Alphonsus Parish, right next door. It was mm -hmm. built by a primarily German uh, parish, and it had offices. It had a bowling alley, billiard room. It had a 984-seat um, auditorium, the Opera House, which is still mm -hmm. in there. Um, so it's been hosting shows on that main stage for, for 100 years. We started wow. celebrating our centennial in uh, October of last year. That's that's amazing. Um, tell us a little bit more about the history of the of the theater. Well, the building itself, uh, like I said, started out as a social center, and it was originally um, two stories with an attic, and then there was a fire in 1939, right on uh, Thanksgiving Eve, and the whole top floor burned down, did wow. not touch the, the, the beautiful auditorium in the back of the building, mm -hmm. and the parish and the, uh, the, uh, the club decided to rebuild the floor, and they built out the third floor. And uh, it was a girls' commercial high school through the 20s and 30s. Interesting. So, so initially this was built uh, for the community of German immigrants living in this area in Chicago at the time, right? Right. Well, it was built by the German immigrants, but really it served all, the entire community because the, the auditorium itself was, was built to do music, dances, to do um, orchestral works, to mm -hmm. do opera. Um, it wasn't until the 90s that the three studio spaces were added and cut up from some of the classrooms and meeting rooms. And now we have three studio spaces seating 67, 81, and 89 seats. And uh, those theaters are available for rent from local mm -hmm. theater companies. So it's a huge space, and I'm sure it's, it, it has a beautiful architecture. Do you know anything about the architecture of the place? It, I believe it's, they, they call it German, German Gothic, but it mm. really is a classic movie theater. You've got your, I believe there's a photo of, of the interior of the theater. Um, every time I walk into it, it is your truly classic feeling place. Red velvet curtains, you've got the red velvet on the back of the walls and the seats. Mm -hmm. um, there are boxes on either side of the stage. And every time I walk into it, I think of The Muppet Show <laughs> with um, Statler and Waldorf up in the booth, uh, you know, heckling. But it is a beautiful space. And you have to understand mm. these sort of stages, there's uh, mm. one of the boxes. Oh, that's beautiful, um, very it's glamorous. An, it's an acoustically perfect space. Um, mm -hmm. You have to understand this was built before electronic amplification. Mm -hmm. So you really had to fill that space with the sound of the human voice. Uh, and you can stand that stage and you can be heard in the back row. Unbelievable. So do you know of any memorable, memorable performances at the theater throughout all these 100 uh, years? You know, there, there are several. Um, we've been the host to Ballet Chicago and Chicago Gay Men's Chorus and to Chamber Opera Chicago uh, most recently. Mm -hmm. But back in the 80s, um, Eartha Kitt performed on our stage in Lady Day. Um, that's just one of many hundreds of, of performances that have taken place um, in the building. Mm -hmm. Well, that's impressive. Tell us a little bit more about the spaces that you have available. Maybe I think we have some pictures about uh, the different spaces that you right. have. Right. Uh, well, on the first floor is, is, our, is our grand lobby, um, which you, you walk into that place, not much has changed in 101 years. Um, and there's the that what we're looking at right now is the inner lobby on the second floor outside the main studio, a uh, main mm -hmm. uh, theater. But uh, on the first floor, we have what is known as the Curtain Call Club, and that is our own bar um, space. That's available for special events. A lot of uh, pre-opening parties happen there. Mm -hmm. um, we've been asked to host you know, bachelorette get-togethers and brunches and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, we generally have it open before the show and during intermission so people can come down for a snack and something to drink. Mm -hmm. And we have an ever-changing art exhibit uh, on the walls right now. Mm -hmm. So every couple of months we have some new artwork po uh, posted up on the walls. Who is uh, who's currently there? Uh, the 
the name escapes me right now. I for, forgive me. I That's wish okay. I, 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 <laughs> we'll have to I go should have been prepared for that, that particular question. <laughs> we'll have to go to um, find out. But by the time this airs, I don't think that will be the exhibit that will be up. I see, because so it's constantly changing. It's constantly so changing. Yes. We always have a good reason to go back and check Absolutely. out the art. Um, we, we, we like to ho play host to Chicago artists. So mm -hmm. um, we've had two installations so far, so hopefully we'll have mm -hmm. many more to come. Uh, tell us, uh, talking about what you're trying to promote, um, tell us about the mission of the theater. Well, the mission of the Athenaeum Theater is to provide affordable um, performance spaces for theater, Chicago theaters and, and for anyone that really loves theater. Mm -hmm. um, if you're a small, a new theater company, you're looking to fill a small house, we've got a 67-seat theater. Mm -hmm. If you are a major opera company, a major dance company, we've got a 984-seat stage that you can do ballet on, you can do modern dance, you can do jazz. We just hosted uh, World Dance Day, where we had over 24 oh, really? different uh, uh, companies. Mm -hmm. We had uh, dancers from South America, we had dancers from Korea, we had dancers from India, we had dancers from Albania. So a lot of companies use our stage. Mm -hmm. um, dance Chicago is coming back to our stage after, after a, a short absence. When is that show? Um, Dance Chicago happens throughout the year. We're finalizing dates on, on Dance Chicago, but if you go to www.athenaeumtheater.org, there's always an updated schedule of what uh, what is going on. So, um, like I said, we do comedy, we do dramas. There's there's a, a lot going on. Mm -hmm. So it, it is important, you know, the mission that you have to promote and preserve and create community. Correct. We are we are truly a theater community because not only do we have the performance spaces. That we try to we try and keep the cost low so it's below market value because you wouldn't be able to afford a rental space in, in mm -hmm. the loop or on Randolph Street. Of course. But our spaces are much more affordable for smaller startup theater companies. Um, we also have office space for 14 different not-for-profit performing arts groups in the building itself. So we're really the crossroads for performances, for dance and theater companies, music companies. Um, just a short roster of the people that are in the building that have offices. Um, Chicago Arts Orchestra, Chicago Acapella, uh, the Human Rhythm Project, Emerald City Theater, Congo wow. Square, um, and many, many more. Very um, impressive. Yeah, so we're, we are trying to promote that sense of, of performance community within the building itself. Mm -hmm. And besides that, also the, the place itself, the architectural, you know, the, the site itself is very important as a Chicago landmark. It is. Um, we are. We are. The building is actually owned by Saint Alphonsus Church next door. And Saint Alphonsus Church, if you haven't had the opportunity, is a beautifully restored uh, uh, German Gothic church. Um, so we hope to work the same transformation on the Athenaeum. We're always in, in need of money. We we figure there's about seven million dollars in renovations. I mean, a hundred years. You need new windows, a new roof, tuck pointing, and that's all the the technical infrastructure stuff before you even get to to restore the the grandness of of the main space. If you can go back to the the main um, auditorium picture, the artwork that you see in the back of the thing it looks like wallpaper. Uh -huh. um, it's actually stenciling. That was all really? done wow. by hand. That's impressive. So um, um, on the back wall, you think you're looking at some some actual wallpaper, and it's actually hand stenciling. There's these beautiful hand painted medallions um, over over the main stage as well mm. that represent some of the great um, theater art mm. artists. Great. So it's it really is a special Sounds space. Very interesting. If somebody like me would like to go and take a tour of the theater, would the that be allowed? Stop on by. We Great. we love when people stop by. We you know because of the economy, a lot of theaters have fallen in hard, hard times, and uh, the Athenaeum was not um, was not immune to that. Uh, we've actually had some hard times for the past five years. I'm part of the new management team that is there to try and revive it and programs like this really help us get the word out about the Athenaeum. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're in the neighborhood, please stop by, knock on the office door. We're happy to show people the spaces uh, for any arts groups that are interested. This is our, our phone number, 773-935-6860. Myself or one of my associates will, will answer the phone. Um, there's only three of us on staff, so you're going to get someone that knows that place inside and out, and mm -hmm. uh, we're happy to talk to you about it at any time. So tell us what upcoming shows you have at the theater. Well, when when this uh, when this show airs, well, there's three things I'd like to talk about. There is um, uh, something called Made in Puerto Rico um, mm -hmm. uh, by Mikey O Comedy. This is a family-friendly, all-ages show. It's really 
Um, the joys of growing up in a multicultural household, whether you're Puerto Rican or American or you're a mixture of both. I mean, Puerto Ricans are Americans, but um, it talks about that multiculturalism and just the humor of growing up in a, mm -hmm. in a Spanglish type of household. Uh, no matter where you're made. I'm sure it's going to be fun. <laughs> uh, this, show, this show will sell out where you have no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. um, we're really looking forward to it. Um, Filament Theater Company is doing a show called uh, Hank Williams' uh, Lost Highway. Mm -hmm. um, the Filament Theater is one of the most exciting new theater companies here in Chicago. Um, this is a, a musical show about the work of Hank Williams. And um, they are a terrific bunch of people. And if really, really want you to come and see this show. If you love the music of Hank Williams, you will feel that you are watching Hank Williams when you see this show. Wow. So, um, and uh, I think the, the other shows that we have coming up, um, uh, the third one is uh, Eclipse Theater's Ah Wilderness. Eclipse Theater, very well known, established Chicago theater. They're doing their entire season with us. This is their second show. Hmm. Um, it was the um, only comedy done by Eugene O'Neill. Um, they do. They choose one playwright and they do three shows by one playwright. And they chose to do Eugene O'Neill. They they uh, did Beyond the Horizon um, most recently, and they're going to be doing All Wilderness this summer. And it really they'll be closing out their season with um, uh, Long Day's Journey into Night. Mm -hmm. So Eclipse Theater, we're thrilled to have them doing their entire um, theater season with us. The Eclectic Theater Company is going to be doing shows with us. Um, we have uh, several other theater companies. Like I said, check that website because I'm sure it changes all the time. I'm sure there's information. Oh, yes. yes, yes, yes. And what other services do you have available? I heard um, that you rent a space for... Uh, non-for-profit arts organization interested. Right. Also, you have rental space for people interested in doing events. Yeah, um, if uh, all the spaces are available for rent if you want to do a special event. Our gallery space leading up to the theater is a beautiful space. The main stage is great for fundraisers. Um, we have hosted the Chicago Improv Festival. Mm. Um, we're going to be hosting the Teen Improv uh, uh, Festival very shortly here. So um, we've hosted memorial services for some actors here in the city as well. So yeah. literally cradle to grave services at the Athenaeum, the birth of new shows and really honoring those people that have passed in the, in the theater community. So you, ser you certainly service, you know, through the birth, yes. through the death. <laughs> well, we, we really want to be all things to all people. Exactly. And it's a, it's a great, great place. You can come there three times in a week and not see the same show twice. Um, so we're, we're affordable, we're close by, you know, we're right by the Wellington L stop, mm -hmm. right off the number 11 bus on Lincoln. So we're right on the right in the middle of, of Lakeview, mm -hmm. and um, we've got great restaurant partners. Um, yes. If you visit the website, I was going to mention that I was checking your website, and I and I noticed that you have a space and area for uh, restaurants in the area offering discounts yes. to people um, visiting. The a a the rapidly theater. rapidly growing list. Um, if you buy a ticket to any show at the Athenaeum, that is good for day of purchases at those local businesses. Not just restaurants, there's a florist, um, there's a great bike shop wow. called Heritage in the neighborhood, um, Fiorentino's Italian restaurant. Mm -hmm. So you can go out for an affordable night out of theater and a great dinner at any of our great restaurants um, just by sh simply showing them your tickets uh, before or after the show. That's great. So I know you've been working there for about a year, correct? Yes, um, mm -hmm. myself and uh, our team, Jerry Kennedy is our, our general manager. Jerry was the business manager at St. Alphonsus Church. Um, they tapped him and pulled him out of retirement to help him kind of reorganize and revitalize the Athenaeum Theater. And if you mm -hmm. see St. Alphonsus Church, the work he did there is kind of a, a good indication of what we're going to be able to do with the Athenaeum under his, uh, his leadership. Um, Mr. Alan Chambers is our director of customer satisfaction. Um, and Alan is very well known in the theater community. Uh, he has been a co-worker of mine for several years and a dear friend. And he will he will take good care of you call that phone uh you probably get his his voice on the other end of the line if you're trying to make reservations over online uh -huh. or on the phone mm -hmm. but you can also go online to our website to order tickets or just walk into our box office and if you're there and you want to see one of the main stage we'll be happy to show it to you and i know that there there's a big improvement throughout this year with this new management um you were telling me that yeah it like i said it's been a hard year for the hard couple of years for the previous management um, it's been a hard, hard time for a lot of theaters. So we think, you know, we're starting with uh, with a, a new vision, a a a, a new energy, mm -hmm. uh, and really a truly a love of theater, a uh, love of Chicago theater in particular. And we are inviting people that have been in, have not mm -hmm. been to the theater in many years to come on back. Whether you're an audience member, or whether you are a theater company, uh, come back to the Athenaeum because we'd love to hear from you. So, what is so interesting about Chicago theater in particular? 
Um, you know, I lived for a couple of years, many years in, in New York City, mm -hmm. and we actually have more theater here. New York is known for the theater. L.A. is known for film. Mm -hmm. um, I think Chicago theater is such a grassroots sort of thing. Um, the fact that a German community could build their own opera house 100 years ago. The fact that companies like Looking Glass used to have their offices in the Athenaeum Theater. Now they're mm -hmm. on Michigan Avenue. You can start out with an idea, a dream, a love of the arts, whether you're a dance company, you're a vocal uh, arts group, mm -hmm. um, and you can form your own theater company and really be a success and play to the people that are passionate about the mm -hmm. art and the art form. Yeah, I think it's uh, something very characteristic of Chicago. It's very authentic. Very authentic uh, and very, very multicultural, mm -hmm. too. We, yes. we, like I said, we hosted World Dance. We've got the Puerto Rican comedy coming. Uh, we've hosted uh, Ekatva, which was this wonderful story about um, these kids from India mm -hmm. that are uh, oh, pulled yes. out of the slums. I saw that in their, their website. Yeah, they Tell had, us more about it. Well, they had their world premiere mm -hmm. um, here at the theater. I think by the time this show airs, that, that event will have passed. Mm -hmm. um, but they started off their national tour here in the U.S. on our stage at the Athenaeum wow. Theater. Very but inspiring but story. it's great that you support this kind of event. Absolutely. Congratulations. Um, we've, we've had a very good year. Um, We've had several artists. We're, we're working with Shubas to bring some more vocal artists to the to the stage. Mm -hmm. um, Shubas has been a terrific partner of ours. They're bringing out Laura Marling, who is a British vocalist. She's going to be performing in in, uh, in June on on the stage at the Athenaeum Theater. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, it's ever changing. I'll go go back to my desk today, and we'll have phone calls There's from something new. three new theater companies that want to do a show there. Wow, that's great. That's great. So, in this short time that you've been at the Athenaeum Theater, is there anything you want to share with us with us in terms of anecdotes, something special story about it? What was the first thing that impressed you about the theater? Why are you working there? Uh, you know the. Once you walk in the Athenaeum Theater, like I said, it's difficult to spell, easy to love. You fall in love with the place when you walk in. It is one of those very special spaces. You feel um, the power, the magic that is theater of a hundred years of history in one mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. A lot of big theaters in the in the city have closed down uh, for periods of time and retooled. We've been continue, continuing this operation of, of being a, a, a theater. Mm -hmm. um, the stories about the Athenaeum Theater uh, as we were working on the centennial, uh, the brass chandeliers in the main stage were melted down and donated to the war effort during World War II. Wow. Uh, we've had our own drama uh, on the campus of St. Alphonsus and, and the Athenaeum. Um, the Athenaeum Theater had a fire in 1939, like I said, that burned down the, the, the top floor. Um, St. Alphonsus Church had a fire in the 1950s that really destroyed the sanctuary and everything. Mm -hmm. They actually came over and had mass at the Athenaeum Theater while the church was being rebuilt. Wow. But what, did that happen for a number of months? It or? happened for uh, almost two years wow. as they re redid the interior of that church. So, um, you know, once again, that was built by a German parish. Um, that neighborhood has changed. It's not any one ethnic group. For us, our challenge is to reconnect with the community, not just mm -hmm. the theater community, but the residents of Lakeview, the residents of, of all of Chicago, so they know where we are. Mm -hmm. um, we have parking on site. We have great restaurants in the neighborhood, and we have variety, and we have local Chicago art. So when you spend your dollars at the Athenaeum Theater, it's you're supporting local theater. Exactly. You're, yeah, you're supporting local artists, local businesses. Um, you know, they talk about local vores in, in dining. Yes. If you want to consume great theater and great art, that's where we are. Come to Chicago, yeah. to the Athenaeum Theater in Lakeview. Absolutely. Um, we are one of one part of a very large campus at St. Alphonsus. Also on the campus is um, the Alphonsus Academy and Center for the Arts, which is an elementary school. Mm. And uh, most recently, the, the kids there just broke a world record uh, and they use our site. They created pop art. They did stencils of um, Darth Vader. Really? And they, That's they broke the, the Guinness Book of World Record for pop art. And wow. uh, they did, I think it was 120 of these squares. We did a gallery opening on our second floor. Oh, that's very interesting. So you walk around the building, you've got kids, you've got Trinity dancers. I mean, the, the kids with the curly hair yes. learning how to dance, <laughs> um, walking through the hallways. You've got ballet dancers. You've got chorus members. You've got opera rehearsing in one place. You've got Wild Claw Theater did a horror theater um, in the early spring. Wow. So really a little bit of something for everyone. It's, it's got to be very exciting to go and work at a place where you are... <laughs> getting in contact with so much art and so much diversity. It, it, it really is. You, you never know what's going to happen. Um, mm -hmm. Today, before I came into the studio, um, we got the phone call. We know there's a, 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 
a power with the problem, po problem with the power someplace in the building. Like I said, a hundred year old building is gonna have some problems. We need new plumbing, we need new power, we need a new roof. All the windows are mm -hmm. from a hundred years ago. Wow. Now, replacing those windows is an expensive thing. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a way w that we can um, absolutely. collaborate with your efforts of uh, restoring the, the building, yeah, correct? Yeah, like I said, I invite everyone to visit the, the website. Um, you can find out how to donate, what our, our greatest needs are. Um, you may not have cash to give us, which is always helpful as we uh, for the restoration of the, of the space. But we're looking for in-kind donations a lot of times, too. Mm -hmm. we're there's always things going out, a refrigerator here, or you know, right. um, lights for the theater are very, very expensive. Or maybe you want to volunteer some of your time. Do you accept volunteers? We or? do accept volunteers. We're very lucky. We actually, um, our building is the offices for Chicago Saints. Uh, and for many of your uh, viewers, the mm -hmm. Saints are the volunteers that usher at almost every single performance oh, venue in the city. And we're very proud to have the Saints as our resident partners inside the building. And that's one of the other things we're, we really want to stress. The folks that have offices in the building, they are our resident partners. The folks that perform on our stages, they are partner theaters. They're not tenants. Um, I have an old adage that my grandfather used many years ago that, you know, a rising tide raises all boats. Um, helping them build their audience helps us build our audience and build that sense of community with the Exactly. Athenaeum. I think it's very important in, uh, to emphasize that, that you're trying to build a sense of community in the Lakeview community and for all Chicago and all uh, Chicago local artists sure. here. So um, once again, uh, here with us is Jeff DeLong of the uh, Athenaeum Theater. I hope I'm pronouncing it <laughs> right this time. <laughs> he's the marketing director of the theater and he's inviting us to um, see Athenaeum Theater celebrating his one, its 100 years. And once again, you can visit uh, their website at www.atheneumtheater.org. And the phone number is there, 2773-935-6860. Jeff, if there's anything else that you want to add before we finish the show? Well, I just want to say we really appreciate the opportunity to talk to, to you, Claudia, and talk to uh, the Chicago audience about the Athenaeum. Um, like I said, we've, we've kind of fallen off the radar of a lot of people. We invite you to come back to the Athenaeum, um, check out the website, see what's going on, like us on Facebook, Follow us on Twitter. Oh, yes. Do you have a Facebook page? We because I absolutely. looked you up on Facebook and I couldn't find you. Oh, well, you can go right to our homepage. There All is right. a button that you push. It's, you can like us right on, on, on Facebook. I'll do that. Um, our Twitter handle is Athenaeum Theater, T-H-E-A-T-R. I couldn't fit the other letter in there because uh -huh. they don't allow you to do that. I know. But, they are um, so short on Twitter. You yeah, know, we're, like we, we're, I'm forever putting things out there. If you go to our website, you can sign up for our, we do a bi-weekly, weekly email, uh, depending on how much we've got going on at the mm -hmm. theater. So you can always get the, the latest news of what's going on. You can find our restaurant partners, what's going on in the neighborhood. You can find about our, our part, pardon me, our partners on the um, uh, campus at St. Alphonsus, Alphonsus Academy and St. Alphonsus Church. Mm -hmm. um, they are, they've been great partners. The church has been very supportive of us as we retool and rebrand and relaunch ourselves for our second century. But um, we need audience members, we need performers, so come down to the Athenaeum Theater. Uh, mm -hmm. We want to be around for yet another hundred years, so um, we really appreciate the opportunity to tell anyone about the theater. No, so thank, thank you, Claudia, you so very much. much. Thank you so much for coming, and please don't forget to visit these upcoming shows. One is made in Puerto Rico on Saturday, June 23rd, and uh, there's another one, too. Um, the Our Wilderness with the Eclipse Theater. Uh -huh. They are, uh, are one of our, our, ten, our resident theater companies. They're going to be doing uh, Eugene O'Neill's Our Wilderness. And Filament Theater Company will be doing Hank Williams' Lost Highway, and that's June 8th through July 8th. Uh, really a fantastic show and really a great theater company. Great. Well, thank you so much, Jeff, for stopping by here. It's been a pleasure talking to you and learning more about uh, the importance of Athenaeum Theater in the community, uh, in the arts community of Chicago. And thank you, Claudia, and thank you, the people of Chicago. Yeah. Come back to the Athenaeum. No matter how you say it, it means great theater in Chicago. Exactly. Thanks for watching.